Okay, welcome. So we all have this uh, terrible feeling. Maybe it, maybe you notice it right now, and maybe it's not so pronounced, but it shows up from time to time, or maybe most of the time. And uh, we tend to think, and this is really the heart of the problem. Now, we well, we think that the terrible feeling is the problem, right? I mean, that's that's what we assume. But the mistake that we make is believing that. So, uh, look to see right now. what it is that is uh, really so problematic about this feeling, this terrible feeling. And, you know, if you, if you say that it's not here right now, then, well, lucky you. <laughs> hmm. And if that's the case, then just enjoy the wonderful uh, absence of the terrible feeling, so long as that's happening, that's great. But if this terrible feeling is here, then just be willing to look right now and see what is so terrible about this feeling. What is the problem? So uh, the common mistake that we make is that we stop short. So of course the mind insists, well, it's just terrible. <laughs> it's awful. It's the worst. It's unbearable. And uh, the invitation here is don't stop short, just allow yourself to really be here, not thinking about it or judging it or analyzing it or uh, strategizing, but to actually be here. And we usually say that, say being with, the experience being with the feeling but actually the truth is it's more intimate than that it's just to be here so see that that is a possibility and that it's possible right now and if you really allow that then you know any number of things might happen one common thing is that there's a intensification seemingly 
So if that happens, I mean, of course, if that doesn't happen, you don't need to go trying to make that happen. But if it does happen, and the reason I point it out is because if it does happen, then you just know that's, that's something that can happen. So you don't need to be spooked by it or uh, concerned. So there's a tremendous amount of energy. And if you consider it for even an instant in light of what we know about the uh, energy in the atom, and you consider the number of atoms that make up your body, there's an enormous amount of energy. So uh, that energy, when we cease to try and well, we cease to maintain the habitual struggle, even just for a moment, then starts to be released. And so, or there's a flow of that energy. So you might notice that and you don't have to notice it but if you do notice it then just know that's all it is it's uh, all all it is makes it sound it's a little dismissive i mean it's it's enormous but it's uh what i mean by that is don't think that you have to make more of it than what it is we can just stay with it exactly what it is it's just this flow of energy it's just a seemingly an intensification just for this moment. And this isn't something that you need to make notes about and try to remember so that you can do it later. It's just about right now. Later won't do you any good. Right now, right now is the once in a lifetime opportunity. So this terrible feeling or wonderful feeling or numbness, absence of a feeling, you know, whatever, actually, the truth is whatever, whatever we think about it. It's just that normally we really struggle with the, what we consider to be the terrible feeling. So that's why I point that out. But really it's any, whatever is here, and uh, this present experience, this present moment, this present uh, feeling, independent of the thoughts about it, it is uh, something we can just be aware of or, well, we, I'll say aware of, and then notice that, that awareness of this experience or this feeling just invites us to simply be aware. So it's okay. You don't have to grip so tightly and try and find it and pin it down and make all that effort. At the same time, you don't want to just fall asleep. So, you know, you straddle that and see where you find yourself. But what you will discover is that there is this uh, we could call it balance, I suppose. Balance maybe is a good word, maybe not a good word because maybe it <laughs> carries a lot of baggage with it, but if you really just sense the, the actuality of it, maybe you notice the, what it really, how it really is kind of like a balance. There's, you're, you're not falling off one side and you're not falling off the other side, you're just balanced. And that balance 
you notice that this balance of being here, just being, is uh, there's a sense, there's a sense of danger to it almost because you don't have uh, confidence. <laughs> you know, you might fall. So most of the time, when we lack confidence, when we're afraid we might fall, well, you just see what happens. You notice we turn to all of our strategies. What, what is this? How do I understand it? What do I do about it? How do I fix it? How do I protect myself? How do I get this under control? How do I understand it? Many other strategies, but you just notice that and notice that when you do that, you're now you're not balancing. Now you're so you're stuck. You, you know you stopped yourself. You were balanced, and then there's this stopping of that through effort. So the the actual experience of this, what I'm calling balance in this moment. The effortlessness is, well, but there I just said it, it's effortless. It's not something that we do. And I point this out often, but I'll point it out again. It's important to point out because otherwise it, this is, um, we miss it. We really will miss it. It's such a uh, different thing from what we're accustomed to. And so we're looking in the wrong way. We look for something. Uh, that is 180 degrees in the other direction from what it is that we actually are desiring, but just out of habit, we're accustomed to looking in that way. So we have to understand that uh, we, we think out of habit, just the conditioning is such that we, we perceive what is effortless as being effortful at first. So you can't trust your mind's uh, analysis of what is effortful and effortless. Now that might seem like, a, uh, you know, maybe you just want to throw your hands up in the air and say, I give up. So I'm too frustrated by this because if, then how am I supposed to know? And I understand. So frustration uh, can I think a pretty normal reaction of the mind because it's the you've reached the limit of the mind. You see, the mind is unable to uh, accomplish this task that's set before it, which is to simply be aware. It's not something that the mind can do. You see, the mind is um, it's just a shorthand, this term mind, there is no such thing. But what we just use that term to refer to the stream of, uh, of uh, what I call dead knowledge, you know, objective knowledge is I, these uh, ideas, thoughts, images, memories, and so forth. So that's when we say mind, that's what is being referred to is not an object. There is no thing called the mind. I'm not talking about the brain. I'm talking about this, um, we could say subjective experience of this stream of objective perception. So that's anything that you're aware of as an object. So as anything that can be uh, grasped in some sense, something that can be given a word or a symbol or uh, um, an image. And you see, this is almost everything that we're accustomed to giving our attention to. So we're very accustomed just to giving attention to the mind. And the, because there's a habit of that, to give attention to mind means we're grasping. Well, in the way that I'm describing it, because that means that we're, we're uh, latching on 
at least momentarily to these ideas or symbols or whatever other kind of term we want to use for the phenomena. Um, and you can, as you slow down right now, so remember this is an interactive process, it's, it's something that you have to, to really receive the, the value of it, you have to be willing to participate presently. So the invitation that I'm extending is for you to engage in this moment in the way that I'm pointing, which is just to take a look and see that you can allow it all to slow down so that you can notice the effort involved. Now, I'm using that word again, but understand you can't, you'll be looking to the mind for the answer to this. You'll say, well, is this effort? And I'm saying, don't do that. You can notice this without turning to the mind. So this word effort is really just pointing to something that's prior to the word, but it can be recognized. You can recognize it. Uh, this is something that everybody recognizes from the moment they're born. It's why a baby can cry. So it doesn't take words or language or prior experience. It's something that's immediately recognizable. And you can just sense that there's an effort or a, a, a contraction or some sense of closing, gripping, condensing. Uh, uh, it, putting a, a, creating some kind of uh, shell. And we're just so accustomed to that, that we don't, at first we don't even have any clue what, what I'm even talking about. It seems like idiocy, really, I understand. Like, hence the frustration, so I get it, the frustration. But I promise you, that it is uh, something that is available to you right now. It doesn't take, uh, you don't have to have some more uh, book learning. You don't have to know some more terms. You don't have to have more experience. You don't have to have anything else. It's just available to you, but it requires the willingness to keep looking and the willingness to be uh, with, if we can, you know, use that word loosely, with the experience of what we consider frustration or uh, impatience or discouragement, so many other flavors of that, but you maybe get the sense of it because you can sense this. Well, you run up against the limitation of the mind and then the strategies come out the strategies like sour grapes well there's sour grapes anyway so forget about it i'll just i'll distract myself with something else and or you know i'll just try harder all these various strategies but what's being pointed out right now what's available to you it doesn't require any strategy it's just simply obvious in the moment when you stop all of the effort. <laughs> so then you say, oh, okay, now, I, now I've got something to do. I, can, I, I have to stop. But see, that understanding of stopping in the mind, which is based on the past, is uh, exactly the kind of thing that I've been referring to as symbolic dead knowledge, and that won't satisfy because it's never satisfied. So don't turn there for this moment. Yes, of course, it's enticing. It appears and there's a habit of making that movement to grasp at it and uh, you know, sink your teeth into it, so to speak. But notice now what's starting to, if you really allow it, it starts to unfold for you is this realization or revelation directly, the direct experience of, that which is an alternative to the habit, which is we start to realize, oh, my whole life, I've only known how to 
do this, how to grasp, how to move, how to take action. And as a result, what has happened is that I've overdeveloped this grasping, but I've forgotten how to surrender, how to release, how to inhibit that action. And so, of course, over time, we see it in our uh, selves and in others at all levels. You know, it's like why they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks because it's not because there's anything about uh, an old dog that is in that inherently prevents the dog from learning but what we have what we see is that the tendency is uh, for aging to be coupled with the loss of the the, uh, we call skill or the living knowledge of inhibition, the living knowledge of surrender. So if, you know, these words inhibition or surrender or non-effort or any of these things, you see, when we turn to the mind, then the mind says, oh, I don't know, here, try this. <laughs> and after a while, we've exhausted all of the uh, trying of the mind. And then we run up against the limitation and then, <clears throat> as I pointed out, the strategies come out, uh, the frustration, discouragement, disappointment, and so forth, anger. And that's when we usually give up, but it's such a rich opportunity. So rather than giving up, or rather than redoubling your efforts, uh, I'm inviting you to see right now in your direct experience that there is an alternative it it's not a one-way uh, reality that's how we've been conditioned to perceive is that there's only this forward moving uh, one way and it's all you know it's, we're trapped in time trapped by momentum but really what we're perceiving there but incorrectly is just this tendency of this overdevelopment of this grasping and the underdevelopment or the atrophy of our in inherent ability to surrender or release or inhibit. So it's over and over and over and over and over and over and over you notice i mean it's like a broken record but over and over i'm inviting you to discover this for yourself right now and then for it to be a living discovery now not for it to be a thing where you you know check off the box okay i get one more piece of dead knowledge i had that experience okay what's next you know, rather it's that you you touch it, you discover it, you feel it, you experience it. There's a direct revelation of this opening, this blossoming, this natural release or surrender uh, or the, um, there's like a tasting of that intrinsic support of life. However you experience it, however you perceive it, but there's a glimpse of it. And then don't make the mistake of putting, filing that away as another piece of dead knowledge or another experience that you've had that you can then, I don't know what, I, we have some silly ideas that we're gonna do something with that. But it's sort of like, you know, people these days, they take pictures of everything. <laughs> and it's like, what are you gonna do with that? You're never gonna look at it because now you've got too many pictures. And this is just sort of the way that we've approached our whole lives. So it's manifest in this phenomenon of people taking pictures of everything, but that's an, an expression of something that's already there for all of us, this tendency of just, we, we, we take what is alive and we uh, analyze it, break it apart into these dead images, dead symbols, and we file them away like, as if we were to um, be accumulating power somehow, but it's uh, false, it's not true. All it does is burden us. So 
uh, again, the invitation is just for this moment, just notice that you have this ability through this through awareness so you're just aware and you start to notice you're aware at a subtler level of this impulse to grasp the impulse of taking action the impulse of trying to do something trying to fix it figure it out or whatever and as you notice that you're aware of it at a subtler level you're able through that to surrender at a subtler level. So as I've often pointed out, it's a learning process. Where so often we've been uh, told, it's been suggested to us that we need to have some kind of, you know, whiz bang fireworks explosion experience in which there's an instantaneous, uh, I don't know, death of the ego or some such thing, and uh, that that's the only way. And I, I will suggest to you that that's not the only way, and it's not even a good way. Um, for most of us, <laughs> I mean, for some, maybe. But for those of us, uh, you know, for those of us who are here actively participating in this world, that would be devastating. Um, maybe not so much for us, because there wouldn't be any, anyone, <laughs> wouldn't be anyone here to be devastated, but it would be devastating for those who um, depend on us and those who are looking to us for something, you know, our spouses or children or parents or community members and you know, employers or employees and so forth and so on. So rather than looking for this thing that's not even really uh, best for us or for the world, it's not in alignment with the with the expression of who we are, you see, that's, you just look and see that that's the truth. You, you are still, you still have uh, desires and that's okay. You know, do we think, oh, I've got to get rid of all these desires, but no, it's foolishness. All of these desires where you have to see all of these desires, who, who do they originate from? It's only, uh, it's only delusion to think that these desires originate from this individual. They clearly don't. In this moment right now, if you simply surrender, just for an instant, it doesn't require some sustained anything. It's just for one instant, repeatedly. You notice you, you just surrender just without even knowing how. You just surrender. Without knowing how, you just release. Without even knowing how, you just let go without even knowing how you just rest, without even knowing how you make no effort, just for an instant. And in this one instant, you were just awake and aware and you, there's a glimpse. So then in this, then you can tell the truth about this. So in the next moment, there's a return of the grasping and again, fixation on the mind, but something new has entered this flash is entered and now it's like uh you can even though it's not the same as the 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 flash of the living experience there's still this like reverberance of that that can still be attended to so you just notice then that that newness is entering reverberating and you just keep noticing that and you let that be, uh, you just let yourself be aware of that. It's like, whoa, what is this? For an instant, for one instant, there's this complete surrender, whereas normally there's this profound contraction. But for one instant, there's a surrender. There's like the release just for one instant. Sort of, whoa, what was that? And then you just keep noticing now what you can recall of that or the reverberation of that and you can see something 
of the freshness of it. You can see that it really is different. And you, and then when that kind of fades and you notice, okay, I'm, now I'm back into my usual thing, then just again, right now, just let go without having to know how. And then you can see what I'm pointing to, which is that all of the look to see in this flash of non-grasping, who, who is here? Is there any separate person here? Of course, when you start thinking about it, then you think, well, well yeah, I'm here and uh, I'm in this world. And so the mind does, that's the mind, but you see, that's all just symbolic dead knowledge. But in this instant right now, just surrender without knowing how, make no effort, don't try. It's like you're, if you've ever had the experience of riding a bicycle and you took your hands off the handlebars, it's like that for one instant. You don't have to ride without your hands off the, off the handlebars forever. You just have this one flash of taking the hands off the handlebars. And if you haven't had that experience, then, you know, it doesn't work for you. But you, maybe you've had some other experience uh, that you can relate this to. So you notice, oh, that's what he's talking about. Just an instant of not making the effort. That's it. Just one instant. Then you see, in this one instant, even in the memory of the one instant, you, there, you can see with some clarity wh who is here. Is there a separate one here? Is there some uh, separate individual that is the source of these desires, the source of all of these experiences, the source of all the feelings and so forth? That's what we think. Say, well, of course, it's me. And the, at the level of the mind, we stop there and the mind says, ha ha, see, I'm right again. But in this glimpsing of this moment of this freshness, even in the memory of it, you can see where is the, where is the separate one? There is no separate one. So this notion that, that I am the source of these desires and these desires are bad and I'm bad and I've got to do something about it and or however it is that you understand it, whatever, I mean, whatever the conditioning is, you can tell the truth about it right now and just see in this one instant of surrender that that's all nonsense because the actual reality is that there's this, this, there's this oneness and this oneness is not, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't belong to anyone. There's no, uh, you know, all these, these desires and even the sense of individuality and all of that is simply arising in this oneness. Well, maybe you find that scary, I don't know. <laughs> But maybe you find it liberating. Maybe a little bit of both. Maybe it's a little bit scary, a little bit liberating. But then what, what, what is the good of this? Well, you look again and see that all of these notions about who I am and what I'm supposed to do and what I've got to, you know, this self-image that I have to project and what it would be to be a success and what it is to be a failure and all the struggles of my life and all everything, you see that it's all based upon uh, something that's not there. It's all based upon this idea of this separate self who is responsible where everything is resting on this one. This one has to get it all right, and this one's got all the problems, and this one's failing, and this one's going to succeed, and so forth and so on. And this one's going to get enlightened, or whatever. And uh, in this one instant of surrender, you can glimpse this boundless reality, which is present here, timeless, and see the 
actuality of it, which is that there is no separate uh, reservoir of these things that it has these responsibilities and liabilities and so forth and so on. And so when you really allow this, you really let this in, you, see, you can experience the uh, liberation of it. That, oh, I don't have to be constantly believing all of the uh, conditioned judgments, condemnation of this one constantly monitoring it, trying to fix it. And instead I can, again, in this moment right now, take metaphorically take my hands off the handlebars and just be breathed, be moved, be lived, be, just be. And of course the mind will come back and say, well, yeah, but it uh, seems like there's still problems and this didn't, didn't work. Then you can see yet again what's happening is just there's an idea that there's some uh, ultimate experience that needs to be obtained by this one this idea of this person and uh, we're comparing in mind analyzing judging what the this experience and comparing that to the idea of what the ultimate experience is supposed to be. And then of course this experience comes up short and then we say, well, it's, it's on me and I'm, I'm not there yet. And I've got problems and I have to worry about it and I've got to fix it and I'm not safe. And this is just what happens. So don't, there's no sense in beating yourself about, up about that either. Again, you see there's a miracle, and I get it, that it's really not clear as a miracle until it is. And then even then, we flip-flop, and I understand that. But just I'm pointing it out so you can catch a glimpse of it, the miracle of this absolute freedom now. That is the reality that we exist in as. Oh, well, that's a relief. You mean I don't have to figure it out? You mean I don't have to get enlightened? You mean I don't have to be a perfect person? Correct. Well, hold on. Because I know what we do next. And then we say, oh, well, then I guess I'll just, uh, I guess I'll just do whatever I want then. Not quite, because that's still this, you see what happened? Still this notion of, oh, there's someone who is doing this. So then this one's gonna decide, well, I'll just be a hedonist. You already, tr we've all tried that. I mean, if you haven't tried it, then you can save yourself. Uh, maybe some other people who have tried it can and can vouch for the fact that it does that doesn't work either. <laughs> Neither hedonism nor self denial, none of that works because it's all just the same fundamental error, which is that it's an overlooking. This overlooking, as I'm pointing out time and time again, it requires effort. So this effort to give attention to the mind now. Once again, I'll point it out because it is very, it is very important, um, the subtle point, but very, very important point, which is that you cannot judge from the mind what is effort and what is non-effort because the mind doesn't have access to that because the reality of non-effort doesn't exist in the mind. You see, the mind, again, that's just a shorthand. Uh, the, the mind doesn't exist as an object, but it's just, what is the mind? It is this, uh, it is really just that contraction uh, of grasping, it, which creates the illusion of these separate things. So I say, well, this is a thought, 
here's another thought, here's a word, here's another word, here's a image, here's a memory. This is a real memory and this is a false memory. This is a, you know, this is a good thought and this is a bad thought. So this is the grasping, that grasping, which it's like you have this flow, ceaseless flow, eternal flow. And then it's like we're pinching it to create this sense of like sausage links. <laughs> <laughs> so in this moment though we can see that there's just this flow and this flow is eternal it's timeless there's no uh, <laughs> sausage links and so the um, what can be recognized in this so i'm inviting you to see it now just to see that in this moment of non-grasping non-effort that there is no mind this idea of mind is requires the grasping but in this moment of no effort there's no mind so the um, all of the ideas are, are not here, but what is here? And you notice before the next grasping, before the next effort, what's here is I am. So just notice that, notice that I am, but the I am doesn't require some image of the self or some thought of the self or some memory of the self or any such thing. It's self-luminous, as they say. So whether there's a grasping or efforting or not, this self-luminous being is i am but you'll notice because it's so strong for most of us that this tendency of trying to you know consulting the mind again well wait a second could that be right could that be true help me out mind is that true <laughs> and the mind says well i'm not so sure hold on let's think about it But the, you can only get so close uh, because the mind has a limitation, has an edge, has a boundary. And so no matter how much you think about it, you'll never, you'll never, ever, 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 ever achieve the uh, totality because the totality is un unachievable. It, it simply is. And it's already here, already is. So you can glimpse it in this moment. So I'm inviting you to glimpse it right now. You just, it's completely effortless. You just, just notice this grasping habit and notice that you have this amazing power, let's call it, which is to, through awareness, just by being aware, not some mystical, magical awareness, you know, consciousness, God thing, but the, just the ordinary, every moment reality of awareness, just simply being aware through this awareness, just by being aware of the tendency to make the effort you see just through that awareness it's dissolved it's very very strange because it seems as though it's still happening but when you just allow <laughs> just allow yourself just to remain aware you'll see that it's is it happening or is it not happening 
and it, to say it's happening or even to say it's not happening, where do you have, what has to happen? And you see, in order for that to happen, there has to be this collapse in another sausage link, another squeezing, another condensation. This grasping has to happen in order for it to collapse into a yes or a no. But prior to that, right now, instantly, you see, just there is awareness. The awareness is not, cannot grasp. So this grasping is actually just like a, it's a dream phenomenon. It's only happening in a dream, as a dream. There's, you pay attention, notice right now, you just are aware, you're aware of this grasping function, but you observe the grasping function, is it really happening? And in order to, rem in order to observe it, there's, there's just this openness. You can't draw a conclusion in awareness. Any conclusion is obviously false because you see in awareness, the, there is no beginning, no end. There's only now. So you can instantly recognize, you can feel it, you can sense, oh yeah, there's that grasping. And then you just simply observe, is that even happening? And you'll see, you got me, but you got to just look and you keep looking and you keep looking and it doesn't ever collapse. There's the appearance of the collapse. But you observe that and then you see it's, that's not, that I can't say that that's happening either. I'm not going to say it's not happening, although it could, but that would also involve a conclusion of some kind. So the, the real truth is we don't even say it's happening or it's not happening. It's like the, the, the notion of happening and non-happening is um, not, even, uh, not even relevant in the wide openness of this presence that I am. And when I say I am, I'm not saying this person is, I'm saying I am. Like you notice I am, when you notice I am, notice I am. As you see, the I am is not uh, personal. I am is prior to the person. The person is an appearance in I am. So nobody, nobody can have that. Nobody can claim that. I mean, I suppose people could, could claim it, but nobody can truthfully claim it because it's the transcendent reality. It's that which is here prior to and during and after the appearance of uh, individual. So all of this is really um, very good news. But also the kind of news that we is so unfamiliar to us, we don't, we, we, we just keep thinking, what do I do with it? Okay, so now well, we could say, well, you can't do any, anything with it, and that would be true. But it's also, uh, it's, it's, it's not, in, it's, it's true, but it's half true. So in the, you can look for yourself directly right now and you can see, it's not hard to see. You can see, uh, you just are innocent for a moment, make no effort for one moment. And you see that there can't be any limitation here. There just simply can't be. The mind is the mind consists only of limitation. I mean, that's what it is. That's what it is. Remember, <laughs> it's that grasping, differentiating, saying this, not that. So it, it, it consists only of those limitations, those those shells, those borders and boundaries. Mm. So the mind will say, well, you know, 
it has to be black or white. It has to be A or B. It can't be uh, anything else. It has to be. So that's our habit if we keep looking to the mind. But you look again right now just to this uh, present reality as it is, unformed. And you see, there's no limitation. There's nothing that uh, dictates that it must be one way or the other, that it has to be, that there has to be some uh, something that is known to mind that can be the definitive answer. Actually, what's revealed is that this um, transcendent reality, this formless reality, this awareness presence is the supreme reality. It's uh, the context in which everything is happening. So uh, now we have supreme reality, eternal, formless, uh, limitless, known directly right now. So just in an instant right now, you see, you just don't make any effort and here it is perfectly obvious. And then uh, we have the thoughts in mind. And out of habit, we just assume the thoughts in mind are more powerful. But <laughs> you look right now and see it's absurd. So actually, the power of the formless is supreme. It's uh, that in from which everything arises and it's the substance of everything and it's that which uh, to which everything returns. It is the uh, solvent that uh, dissolves all appearances of separation and uh, all conditioning. You can just observe that happening. It's not uh, difficult. You can just see that happening. Just don't make any effort. And you see it happening. You see there's, a, there's no effort. And then you see this grasping. And then you just keep watching. And you see, oh, yeah, that grasping. It can't stay forever. It releases. And then there's another grasping. And that releases. So you just see, keep seeing that happening. And you see, oh, all of these things that are appearing all of these forms and thoughts and ideas and people and the world and everything um, is there's just little blips in the eternal reality that I am. So, well, then there, then the idea that, that we can't it's, see, again, it's true that there's nothing we can do with it, but as, as I say, it's only half true because then the notion that we can't do anything, with it can't, that can't actually be entirely true. There can't be any such limitation. So then what we're left with is the peace inquiry. So how about that? So how does that work? I think most of you know, but we'll, we'll explore it together. So for one instant, you just simply let go. Don't make any effort. And in this one instant, there's a glimpse and don't try to hold on to it or do anything with it, but just see in this one instant that this is a uh, formless, limitless, and boundless. You see this directly, experience it directly, know it directly not with the mind, but just directly. It's obvious if you just don't make any effort. You just notice, uh, as I pointed out, yes, it's true. It's boundless, limitless. And I am, right? I, I am. I mean, right now, I am, you see. In the disappearance of the seeming separation, the disappearance of all the objects and everything for one instant, I am. So I am, and we could call this... Uh, unconditional peace. So you glimpse this unconditional peace now, and then just invite into your imagination the possibility of this unconditional peace expressing fully and freely through your body, your mind, your emotions. 
your relationships and your community. So you just imagine that. And of course you can't. And that seems unfair, but you just, you notice actually what happens when I invite you to imagine it is you just notice the limitations. You notice where you say, oh, I don't know about that. Where it seem, or even if you say, oh, it feels so good. I can imagine something that's really wonderful, but you notice there's a limit to it. So you just notice that there's a limitation and you just don't have to make any effort. You don't have to do anything. You just allow that. And this power of awareness simply shines the light that dissolves whatever, whatever is not uh, fully and freely expressing that unconditional peace. Mind, mind can't make any sense of it, so don't worry about it. Mind, mind can't either. And then one more time, you just surrender, let go. Don't make any effort. Just, I hope that's clear by now. It's, it starts just, you see, it's a learning process. You learn how it's possible and you, without having to know how you can just do it, you just or not do it. <laughs> and you notice here in this one instant, I am, and this is unconditional peace. There's nothing to, mm, prevent it, to obscure it, to block it, to interfere with it. It's eternal, whole, complete, and it's uh, beautiful and very restful. And so we just need a glimpse. It does not worry about it, holding on to it, but you just have this glimpse and then imagine possibility of this expressing this unconditional peace expressing through your body through your mind through your emotions through your relationships and don't you don't have to do anything with any of it you know this um when you're really sincere you'll just things will bubble up you'll feel it the pain of it the pain of that habitual limitation, the pain of the regret, the pain of all this stuff that you've been holding on to. And you'll just see all the habitual strategies and don't worry about any of it. It's you're, you, you, it's, it's exactly right. You just to see it. That's all. Notice the seeing is just this pure light of awareness. And, and then you just notice, you know, like whatever it is that is, is the conditioning that appears, something changes, you know, it becomes somehow transparent, maybe not in the way that you would like, and maybe not as quickly as you want, and maybe all these things. But if you really are observant, you'll see that you just, it's become somewhat transparent. You, it's not so believable any longer. There's more uh, openness to it. There's more allowing. And you start to see the same kind of question. Is it really happening? Is it really true? And you can't be so sure because there's just this openness, this pure light of awareness shining on it. So it, we're not trying to get rid of it, although it will dissolve eventually. But if we make effort to get rid of it, that won't work. Rather, we're just allowing, seeing, and then noticing the increased transparency of it, the incre increased openness, allowing, not knowing, not so quick to grasp. And so in truth, start to notice actually that unconditional piece is beginning to express more fully and freely, even in just a little bit. So as always, thank you for joining me. And blessings to you all. And for those who are here live, we can stay on for the Q&A. I'm going to end this video and start a new recording.